In this video, we're going to check out the work of Orai Noriyoshi via his book, Green Universe. This book is jam packed full of really, really awesome, classic, impactful style poster and cover imagery. Again, even though it is form based, I think it has a classic, unmistakable Japanese sense of design. And that's why I think this is so interesting to look at. Anyway, let's jump over to the drawing table and check it out. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name is Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, if you'd like to learn more about illustration and picture making, you can check out my free illustration mini workshop. It charts my journey going from an amateur to a professional. And I talk a lot about really important issues such as how to get more detail and polish in your work, how to plan your images, create thumbnails, and also a few thoughts on how to approach being a professional artist. As I said, it's free. The link will be in the description. Go check it out if that's something you're interested in. So Noriyoshi, Orai is, and again, my pronunciation is probably terrible, but he is or was, again, he passed away in 2015, so the late, was a really good example of a couple of things that I think are really worth highlighting and looking at as artists who are aspiring and trying to get better at illustration. He's a really good example of a couple of really key things. He's most well known for creating these type of poster style imagery. And, and, and this is, you know, a type of imagery that, that I feel like sort of doesn't, isn't around to the same degree because we, we often have like trailers instead of posters that do similar things. But, but it's almost like the same thing. It's like the trailer for a movie. It's the trailer for a game. It's a cover image. It's all of these things kind of combined into one image. And I think he really excels at that. He's well known for creating these types of iconic posters. I think he also has a really interesting mix of, I feel like a, a good solid Japanese design aesthetic, but mixed with uh, kind of like a form based Western rendering style. And uh, again, I feel like it's a really interesting mix of things, but he's well known for this type of imagery as well as the sort of Godzilla giant monster type posters that again you often see so if we look at a few examples of those again here we go classic sort of Godzilla poster and, and these images that just have a massive amount of impact he's also known for creating some of the international posters for and promotional artwork for the Star Wars movies see here obviously the sort of prequels and I think back in the day um, for the original trilogy so again a really esteemed um, poster style cover style illustrator and I think even though a lot of these images are very much in the theme of Drew Struzan and other great sort of poster designers I think there's something kind of next level about the way that Noriyoshi deals with color and impact and vibrancy. If you look at a lot of Drew Struzan imagery, it's kind of all sepia. It's a little bit tame, but I think this guy manages to just pack every single color of the rainbow into one image and create these really intense abstract worlds, right? And I think this is a type of imagery that's well worth exploring if you're trying to create a lot of impact and again, lots of things that we can learn here. So the first thing of note is, as I said, this idea of abstract poster style imagery. And that's where we are doing this weird thing where it's every scene from a movie. It's an abstract collection of different things put into one image. And if you've tried to kind of do this and encapsulate a lot of narrative and story, within a single image, you know how challenging it is. And I think this is just a really great example of how to do that. You can see there's so many examples where the art does a couple of really, really key things where it works. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but it works from far away. And it also works when you go closer. And that's so, so challenging to do. I think all of these images are going to work if you imagine it from the sense of being, um, 
seeing this across the room as a giant poster or movie poster and you see it and there are big shapes and there's a big level of contrast where you're like bam okay this looks interesting but as you get closer the details kind of unfurl and you start to see and appreciate more and more of what you know the story in the movie is about and and this is a very challenging thing to do it's a weird idea but i think he does it really really well so if you're interested in trying to understand how this type of imagery works i think he is a really really good example of it and again you can just see it again and again there's so many images in this book and you can just see that basic idea repeated over and over so yeah really good example of poster design and how to encapsulate a story in an abstract composition combine various subject matters into a single image it's also worth noting how a lot of this functions because often when we're trying to tell a story in a cover or a promotional image the goal is to kind of get across the feeling of what this thing is meant to be and even though it is this sort of jumble of different parts of the image, I think he does a really good job of handling different subject matter, as you can see, using a, a similar sort of style, but some are more laid back, some are more crazy. So they're telling different stories. Either way, I think this is a good example of being able to really deal with the abstraction of ideas. And for me, when I sort of started out, I feel like this was a real challenge because I was stuck in this concept of telling a story like it was a photograph, like I wanted to get to a place where I could kind of communicate by saying, hey, here's this real vision of the world in my head and I just have to kind of paint it like a, like a photograph. And even though I work in a stylized manner, there is still that sense of trying to treat it a little bit like it is a real scene. And the interesting thing is that I feel like often you can communicate just as much story or more story and potentially, again, create a lot of imagination in the viewer's mind about what is going on through a single image. And, and I think you just have to kind of step off and delaminate from reality a little bit and have fun. And I think this type of imagery is... You know, you don't see it quite as much anymore. I think people are a little bit in the, you know, frame of trying to create images that kind of make sense. But there's something really fun about this idea of just combining a whole bunch of different stuff and kind of thinking about what that means. I mean, certainly for an artist, probably you're, you're probably the same. We we like to imagine things, right? So I I think I feel like this this type of imagery often lends itself really well to that, where you see a bunch of random stuff and you kind of create. A narrative from it but I do think that this idea of learning how to tell a larger story an emotional story through a single image by combining a whole bunch of random things is a real art and Noriyoshi does an excellent excellent job of that and if you want to become a student of that art I think his work is well worth checking out. One of the other things that's worth noting is that a lot of these compositions have a lot of power which is tricky because again, they're just often a whole combination of random things. But you can often see the use of these strong triangular sort of pyramid style shapes here. There's often this real sense of strength and you can see that basic concept play out again and again and again. So if you really look at how these compositions are put together, it it does lend itself to that abstract style, your Mondrian, Picasso, pure abstract level of art making where you start to understand how and why a lot of the rules that you might you know, come across in a book such as creative illustration become so important. Because when you have this chaos, it's just really important to try and figure out like how to frame it, right? Like how to kind of make it make sense. And also you would imagine as an artist who is given all these different briefs that you kind of have to have a system to figure out how to encapsulate that information but also really great examples of uh, book work and, and cover work and, and all of these kind of things yeah good example of just how to create a lot of drama and if we go back to some of those godzilla images in the beginning you really see that playing out full force because when you're trying to 
illustrate these you know really serious epic compositions again you know great example right we've got these kind of x shapes and it's just the the guts to kind of create that much um sort of pure symbolic iconic sort of shape design within the frame of painting something that looks semi-realistic I, th I think is is really interesting um but yeah again you just see this triangular composition again and again and again but this guy again it's all about just pure composition thinking about the triangles thinking about the direct lines thinking about the you know vibrancy of color directing the eye where we want it um and i think you know that power and simplicity again i think this one also does a good job right um again just the ability to communicate that i think is is really really useful um so yeah a huge variety of different ways to create composition but you know a lot of these posters i mean look at this thing right it's just this giant millennium falcon right creating this huge diagonal um a super super fun design and uh, again the same thing here just kind of like really really gutsy graphic design going on um that again you know you 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 can see a lot of these things maybe happening in in a drew struzan poster or other sort of poster designers things but again i feel like there's a real sense of um again sort of guts to these images where it's just like yep we're doing this we're going to use every color in the rainbow and uh <laughs> We're going to, um, you know, go for broke, which is interesting, again, because obviously he's from, you know, uh, an earlier era and all of the stuff he's creating is traditional. So, again, really good control of saturation and color and impact. And speaking of color, I think it is worth mentioning that if you are trying to push your saturation, if you're thinking, how do I how do I make stuff brighter? The way that color is handled in these images, I think, is next level. I mean, if you look at this collection of different i'm assuming it's some sort of science fiction magazine from from back in the day yeah sort of 1986 um from japan but like there are just examples of every single color right just kind of squeezed straight out of the tube it seems and again the aggression and the guts of these color schemes is next level and they work right you can really see that again it's like there's blues purples greens right and it's not like you know sort of greeny blue and everything's the same it's you know lots of bright reds lots of these really impactful colors so if you're sort of thinking about that right you, know, you tend to get stuck in gray zones <laughs> everything's a little bit mushy it's well worth looking at how this is handled and how the um different elements are kind of gated towards particular um almost like monochromatic color schemes often what you're seeing is a real combination of you know different elements within the frame having almost a monochromatic color scheme and you know they're being very graphic right there's almost like a maxfield parish style motif there but um again impressive in the line and color style it's a little bit easier for us to kind of do that but again here i think it's really really interesting to see how that's handled so if, you, if you're sort of you know looking at pushing your color you know good to get some of these into photoshop eye drop around and just sort of understand where the color vibrancy is but you know, there's so many things here where you know this really is being driven by color right there is obviously form rendering but really i think the primary read here is color contrast it's not necessarily form contrast and you know just these bright blues right at the periphery of the image it's really hard to make this stuff work and still then go bang right that's where we're meant to look right at any point in time you're like where am i meant to look oh right just here but there's so much other stuff going on that's fully rendered with um crazy crazy color um, and again, great ability also to work in black and white, but well worth studying the color happening here. I think you can learn a lot about how far you can push it. <laughs> and if you do want to push it that far, exactly how to do it. And one of the things that I think makes his style unique is precisely this mix of really bright colors. And again, as I said, like a distinctly sort of Japanese design aesthetic, like there is a flatness to it. Um, there's a drama to it. There's almost that kind of manga-esque, like, again, delamination with reality where it's just like, this is what we're going to do. It's a bit crazy, but again, it's going to be fun. This interesting mix of this type of graphic 
image making with form based um, Western style rendering, right, which is actually quite well done. So again, it's another thing you can study for how to sort of, you know, sit on the fence between particular styles and, and you know, just really understand what is and isn't possible. I think there's a lot of things here that um, are very interesting because probably if you did really study the you know more form-based rendering you might not end up with this maybe if you came from a different visual language culture but the the way it combines rendering with graphic nature and the brightness of color um, is actually super super unique and and well worth studying again just like crazy look at all these freaking colors but i think you know the thing that i've touched on earlier is probably the number one idea that I really take away from Noriyoshi's work is, as I said, this ability to create an image that works as a thumbnail and also works as you get closer to it. I think this is a true next level master ability to do that. The ability for an image like this, which is just pure chaos, to again, be able to be viewed from further away. And if we just kind of go through and find some of these that might be a little bit smaller we might be able to see some examples of how you have some of these smaller covers and and you can kind of see that you know all of these types of um, image work right they work from from far away and and that's kind of always really solid there but as you zoom up especially to the larger ones that were probably meant to be seen bigger you really see that they are going to work as you get closer. So I think this is this is like a really, I know this sounds like I'm going on, but this is like a really subtle, important point to make. And it's a lot about one of the most important things that I'm always talking about, which is hierarchy of detail and hierarchy of shape and, and what we're likely to understand. So where we do have these kind of masses of figure, right, with these little dioramas that are almost vignetted out, um, you really have to look at the level of detail here. So there's, there's these little worlds happening in the background, but the things that are meant to be in focus are always having that sort of next level of detail or they have like a clear size discrepancy, right? So again, we have these big faces here, our eyes are gonna be drawn there. We've got a lot of detail around the sail. We've got detail here. So your eye is going to kind of bounce around and then it's going to see all these little bits and pieces there. There's something to captivate your eye. But if you saw this from across the room, you would also, I think, just be instantly, you know, um, involuntarily attracted to it from, a, from an abstract point of view. Um, and again, that's something that is non-trivial to do. And also interesting, a bit of a lost art because so often these days we're working digitally and when we work, when we work digitally, everything's kind of uh, you know everything's kind of pretty small, right? And and you never, I mean, we do have thumbnails and things like that that are important, but in most cases, we we don't get that thing where we need to create both at the same time. Um, although I think it is a, a great hallmark of you know great work is that it works um, you know far away and close up. So anyway, just a, a few thoughts there. Um, about his work, but yeah, his ability to create stuff that functions as a thumbnail and also, you know, when you zoom up is absolutely next level. And that's the main thing that I've really, you know, been trying to sort of take away from this and kind of understand is like, how is that happening? So that's just a quick look at Green Universe by uh, Noriyoshi uh, Orai. And again, I think the things that you can take away from his work of things that I've mentioned. And if you're interested in any of these concepts, I think it's really worth finding artists like this that do them really well. Even though I feel like this artist is a little bit esoteric from you know my perspective today, I think there's things that you can learn from artists who are dealing with a very particular problem at that time. These posters and covers that just needed to sell, right? They needed to capture attention at different links, right? You can really learn about what is and isn't possible. And again, you know, you can really learn about how much color you can put into an image. And again, these things are printed, right? The amount of sort of vibrancy of color here is is crazy. So super interesting artist, very, very unique. And uh, yeah, I mean, I recommend this book or any of the other books um, that are going to be out there. 
um, of his art. And uh, hopefully this was interesting. Let me know what you think, right? Do you sort of like this? Any other artist you can think of that fit in the same mold? Um, yeah, other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.